I explain everyone. Bye. Um, hi. <laughs> this meeting is being live streamed. Got it. Okay. It says on my end the same thing. It says meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. Okay. I explain everyone. Bye. All right. <laughs> It looks like we are live. Okay. Let's see. I muted it so that I could uh, at least see you without seeing, but now we should just, uh, I guess, just make sure it's working. Yeah, it says eight people are watching now, so I guess it's working. <laughs> Hi, hello everyone. Yay. I wonder if there's a way that you can get on here so that you can see. Um, Alif, maybe if you go on the YouTube, uh, you might be able to see so you can see the chat too. I don't know. Oh, okay. Actually, let me maybe do that from my cell phone so I can yeah. see. Yeah, just so that you can, can see that. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. And, and then we can give people a second to kind of come on. And Rochelle says, hi, Alif. Hi, hi guys. Give me one second. I'm trying to see on your comments on YouTube too. And let's see. What does it say? Oh, live. Okay, I see. Okay. Oh, it's, it's Rachel. Hi, hi. I know some of these people. I probably know everyone. <laughs> oh, perfect. We oh, you know, is it Rachel? My stepmom's name is Rochelle. So it's, oh. it's almost like that. Yeah. Okay. So, hi guys. Perfect. Welcome. Welcome. I, I, I um, wish I could see you guys and hear you guys. It's just, it's weird, but I know you are there. <laughs> Thanks for it's coming. It's really weird. And it's, I've done a live before where I was by myself and it was very like, am I talking to myself or do you guys hear me? <laughs> <laughs> to the space, yeah. So at least it's nice having a conversation, but yeah. Well, I'm just going to, you know, I mean, I'm sure people will, are going to slowly kind of come on, but um, just to introduce myself, my name is Bryn Young, and I uh, have the podcast Design, Create, Inspire, and this YouTube channel, uh, which confusingly is not called Design, Create, Inspire, even though I call it that. But anyways, um, I talk all about architecture and business and the path of becoming an architect. And so obviously a big one of those is the ARES. And that is why I reached out to you because, you know, you're kind of like, the queen in this space right now. <laughs> so I just wanted to, you know, chat with you and, and hear your story. And also um, I have so many people reaching out, just not knowing how to get started or just feeling a little defeated of, during the process. So I thought it'd be good to chat with you and um, hopefully give some people some hope. So, so yeah, do you want to introduce yourself to start? Hi guys, this is Elif Bayram. I am the founder of AREQuestions.com. I hope you're familiar with. And it's a website that has practice questions, quizzes for five of the area exams now. Recently I launched PCM, so now it's five. And it's been a journey. Well, thanks so much for coming. Like, like Brian said, we are, I mean, I, she's the same way. There are Thank God now there are more and more people like us trying to help the community to, to survive through this, this process. And we just wanted to show you guys that like, just want to let you guys that like, you are not alone. We are here to support and we love to be part of your journey. And we are really like um, motivated by your existence, your emails. You're reaching out to, to me personally makes me always happy and I'm never complaining. Please feel free to do so. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, yeah, so we wanted to do this live chat tonight because Brian reached out to me and said like she was kind enough to offer and we came up with this idea and we said, okay, let's do a live chat and talk to people because I know you guys have questions and it's not uh easy to write emails all the time i also don't like writing emails yeah. <laughs> already know when you guys send me a long email i sometimes say like what's your phone number let's talk <laughs> <laughs> i am a better chatter than writer so. <laughs> i am too and that's why i do uh podcast and video instead of just blog posts because i'd rather talk for a half hour and write you know a couple sentences yeah. so but well, well so what was your um are experience 
So I, I came to US in 2000, late 2014. And before I came here, I kind of researched about it, like how the process is to become licensed uh, in US. And it's looked a little like, not a little, way too different than my experience in Turkey. Uh, I have a master's degree and undergrad degree, both in architecture and architectural design in, in Turkey. So I have been in the world of architecture since 2003. And I, I have been, a, I have been also a, a long time test taker because Turkish edu because of Turkish education system. And I kind of underestimated the whole thing. To be honest with you, I thought, oh, it's another set of test tests. I'm good at tests. Like I'm going to do it. Uh, I can do it. I mean, eventually I did, but I was, <laughs> I was hoping that it will be much easier. And 2015, I, uh, yeah, the New York State allowed me to take my first exam, I think somewhere around like 16, like after two and a half years. And then I did not study at all. I took one exam to just try. That was 4.0 at the time. I just wanted to go there to test center to see. I think it was a, I, I'm not, I'm not regretting that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to see how an American multiple choice test is like standardized test is it looks like mm -hmm. so because I've never been to school in the United States so I just wanted to see the language the, the, how, how it works and I went there of course I failed because I did not look at anything <laughs> but it didn't like kill me to be honest yeah. with you. life got in the way between 16 and 17 and then I got pregnant and then when I was pregnant I didn't want to stress myself and when I gave birth late 17 i said okay now it's the time because i am at home with baby and although newborns take a lot of time and you don't sleep much the first almost year i still thought that but i can it can take my mind off of just being a mom and being at home with the baby you know that was my entire life and i i had such a like colorful i mean like life before than that it was just one thing I never had just one thing in my life so I started to get bored mm -hmm. of just care of the baby and I'm like okay I need, need I need to it's so funny that I started Aries to just keep take my mind off the baby and think something else as a I, distraction I 100% know what you are talking about <laughs> it is so funny that it's such a hard task to distract yourself from something also very hard like it's like yeah super challenging. I don't know why I thought that it's a good idea, yeah. but I started with the baby and she was very young and I started to take first exam around May, uh, 2018 and then Ju July, the other two. And then around like that at the end of 18, 2018, basically I passed first four exams. So that was, that looked pretty good to be honest with you. Like on my end, I was in my own cocoon. I was not looking so much out there. I was not going on the forums like crazy. I was just going NCAR forum, reading the first 20, 25 comments mm -hmm. about that exam. Then I was Googling and then founding all the practice questions that I can find available online. And then what books people tell me to, or not people, NCAR tells me to read. Right. Because for, for the first three exams, the pro practice exams, it's just one book basically, right? So right. it wasn't scary. But once it started to get scary with the technical exams, uh, PA, I think PA, I passed it just like 51% because I was a good test taker, to be honest with mm. you. Yeah, not that I, I mean, I read a lot. I studied a lot. I studied like 14 weeks or so. It's too much, I know. For some people, it's like, are you crazy? What are you talking about? That's enough. But for me, because the amount of books now was were like, like five, six books, I felt like, oh, I didn't study enough because that architectural handbook of professional practice, I read that book cover to cover and like, and some chapters three, four times. Mm -hmm. So, so compared to that, I didn't feel overly prepared for PA or enough prepared for PA, but then I passed it. And after the exam, I came home and I told my husband, like some of the questions you didn't need to be an architect, like just be in, on a good day, have good rest and sleep and not too anxious. And you could even you could pass that exam i said like and then it's just some of them are like just common sense or like tricky puzzle kind of like mm -hmm. questions that i just got lucky to be honest with you mm -hmm. which, is, which is not great that, it, that the exam is just 
based on luck, but <laughs> well, and on the flip side, then if you're not a great test taker or you do go in there with some anxiety, it could go the total opposite way, even if you are super prepared. So that's a big, yeah. My observation regarding PA the last year, 2021, was that the most, ex like people struggle with the PA most, in my opinion, based on the emails I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, if you're not a good test taker and if you have anxiety issue, you are dumb. Like it's so hard to pass that exam. It's so unfortunate. Anyhow, and then when I was, but the journey ended, uh, hit, Hit, hit a wall with PPD and PDD, basically. The, it was the, the, the movie was going so good to be true. And then it just <laughs> <laughs> took a really downturn. And like that, that lasted like 11 months for me to pass just two exams, uh, which was a, OK, this is going to sound crazy. And I don't want to sound inconsiderate, guys. I, I really apologize if this comes off like a little inconsiderate. But it was a good thing that happened to me that year at the end of the day, like hindsight, looking back, it was a good thing. Uh, it was a very humbling experience. It was a very, I was telling Brian earlier that it was a like a trauma, but kind of turned into something positive. Started as a trauma, but like affected me in a very, very good way in the, in the end. And I became a much, much stronger version of myself. I found so much power in myself that I did not know existed there, that I didn't know that it was there. So much willpower, so much like this, this fire to keep kept me going. I didn't know that it was there and it was there and it came out with, if I did not fail those exams, to be honest with you, I was going to have another experience probably in life, another struggle to, to bring that out. So that was good at the end it, it turned out to be good when i was going through that it looked very dark mm -hmm. i'm not gonna lie to you and i was very i felt very down and deep but i uh, eventually i found my way out of that darkness and yeah. i think that is a personal journey that everyone goes through and everyone have their own way to hopefully find a way to to come out we can uh, suggest you guys a couple things uh but you have to take it with you and think internally that okay what kind of person am i and how can i turn this into something positive for myself how can i come back from this and it's not going to happen in one day it's a process it's going to take maybe weeks or months for me it was months uh and that and then you are going to get there I, I believe that like most of you most of the people have that in in them that yeah. otherwise like otherwise we wouldn't see the oh, uh, average pass rate of the six exams, 2.7 years. So eventually we all find that. <laughs> eventually the light is at the end of the tunnel. But I, I had the exact same experience where it a lot of times felt very isolating um, because even though, you know, you have people that you knew from maybe school or whatnot, you know, my, my family, there wasn't anyone going through the process there. I didn't really necessarily have a great community <clears throat> of people also going through it quite yet. Um, I discovered things like the ARE Facebook group, maybe halfway through my exams, which was really great. But before that, it was really isolating. So, you know, I'd go and see friends that say, oh, like you took a test. How did it go? And, oh, I failed. Oh, you're still taking those? You know, and it was just like you kind of just recluse and you don't have time or energy to go do a lot of things. So it can feel very isolating during the process. So but like you were saying, too, like there's something really empowering about the struggle. Like if it was so easy and everyone would do it, you wouldn't have that same gratification at the end there's something a little masochistic about it I think that, you know it's, it really does make at the end that much more uh you know something to celebrate it is it is a learning moment for you it's it's a when I say moment it's not a moment it takes a, it's a it's a process right it's a learning process it's a it's a it's a new chapter in life it's a new page that you are like oh you know what I am a different version of myself it's like becoming a parent it was like that right so when you become a, the other day i saw somebody on instagram was pregnant and asking that uh how am i going to feel like my old self like wh how, how long it's going to take to feel like my old self and i saw like thousands of posts underneath that parents say you are never going to feel like your old self you're but a new self yeah you are it, but, but it's a hopefully a better version of you 
So mm-hmm. I feel like like the, giving birth and becoming a mom was very similar to passing these exams. It's a process. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. It hurts. It it is a struggle. You cry. You go through that depression, mm-hmm. and then you come out of it with a better version of self with a great result. So mm-hmm. and since I had those two experiences so close to each other, I can't help but compare them so much. And if parents out there, I know there are. I know some of you guys have like more than two, three kids. So <laughs> kudos to you. I don't know how you do it. You keep asking me like, how did you do it? I'm like, how do you do it? Yeah. <laughs> more than one kid and passing these exams, you need a, like an Oscars, I don't know, <laughs> gold medal. And, <laughs> but like you said, community was very important in my success too. That's why what we are doing is very important, I think. Yeah, and I think too, exactly what you're saying, community also for people who are parents, because I get a lot of people who reach out to me that say, you know, I was studying for the exams and then um, my wife and I, or my husband and I had a baby. And so I put it all on hold and, and how do you go about that process? And it, it is a whole like other beast. I mean, it's like you say, parenthood in itself is really difficult. Studying for the exams is really difficult trying to navigate the time. Um, so I want to hear your experience with that. I just, before I just want to say too, though, there is something about being a parent that makes you have to really delegate your time efficiently. And so in a way for me, it almost made me a more efficient studier um, and make me want to get through the exams even quicker because I'm like, there's no, I don't have time to, uh, you know, spend another weekend studying when I have the kids and stuff like that. So for me, it was almost a a more of a motivator, but what was your experience with that? I think I was, yeah, I think I, I was kind of lucky that maybe the, the it, she was a baby at the time. So uh, like she turned a couple of months after she turned two, basically I was done with all the exams. So um, I was studying at night most of the time, even though I'm a morning person, I had to, I ended up studying at night and I studied between typical day was like 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Mm-hmm. So that two to three hours, whatever you can squeeze there. I did not watch TV much during that time. I love watching TV shows. I am addicted to TV. I can <laughs> like embarrassingly admit, but I stopped. <laughs> I deleted a lot of, I almost, yeah, I guess I deleted entire social, all of the social media apps from my phone because guys, I noticed that I read a study, uh, again, be, <laughs> uh, benefits of being a parent. I was looking into why, why making, letting your kid watching screen is bad because everybody said, don't let your kid to watch screen. I'm like, why? So I, when I was studying, reading for that, researching for that, I find out that when we are subject to, when I, our brain is subject to constant stimuli, stimuli um, it becomes addicted to it. Mm-hmm. And a screen creates in every second, less than second, it, it, it change, the frame changes. So your, your brain gets in to synchronize with that change. Uh, Instagram, the stories, TikTok, whatever, all of that is even crazier than that. It's so mm-hmm. fast paced. So what happens to your brain is you cannot focus at like reading a page of paper at once because your b- brain is craving for that change, for the jump, constant, mm-hmm. constant jump, which the book doesn't give you, right? Book is just yeah. a, something super- It doesn't super- give you that dopamine hit. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So the, 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 the research, the academic research that I read said, if you are struggling with, with um, attention, if your attention span is now super narrow because of being subject to screen all the time, delete all those social media apps, stay away from TV. It's going to take like four to six months. Me and my husband did, he, he did that same thing in solidarity. So we deleted together and I, it, it took exactly like six months. And I became a much, much better reader Mm -hmm. before it was taking me to read a paragraph like twice to understand. I became like reading the page, the whole page and retaining most of it. And I honestly still just look into social media because of the the Facebook group, because of the business. That's it. Like I'm not looking at social media much. I'm not posting much. It is really like I'm not watching, trying not to watch too much TV as much as I did before because it really narrows down your attention span. And I, I think becoming a parent was very helpful because we removed the TV, we deleted all that apps. So it was dangerous for the kid kind of helped us um, unknowingly. So I became a better reader. And then uh, eight to eight to 11 was my like religious time. I said no to many friends for 
everything and some of you were like i even eliminated them entirely from my life eventually because i noticed that they are not good supportive friends mm -hmm. and i don't need people like that in my life even after passing aries i have seen them on my bad days so i don't need them on my good days kind of thing i'm like okay bye because they were constantly making comments about how much i study it, it makes you feel like oh because it implies that oh you're not smart enough you're you're stupid that you need to study this much to pass one exam right mm -hmm. that it has that implication admit it or not mean it or not so stop saying people to that like oh are you still studying for that it's so yeah. inconsiderate oh you're still taking those oh my gosh yeah, yeah. It's, so just... it's, it's such an awful thing to say so stop seeing people like that i would say like mm -hmm. and if your kids are a little older now that i have a toddler again she goes to bed a little later she doesn't sleep at eight anymore it's like nine nine thirty have your significant other if you are not hopefully if you're not a single parent again such a huge challenge i i admire you if you're a single parent mm -hmm. and then have the kid also like understand because they are now growing you are setting a great example that you don't quit you don't give up you are studying my father was studying finishing getting his uh, college degree when i was seven eight years old so he started and took five years for him to uh, yeah, to finish a four year college. And it was such a great example. Mm -hmm. Like it changed probably my behavior as a student entirely because I every night, uh, me, my sister and my dad was on our dinner table studying together, doing homeworks together. So you are setting a great example. There's, an, I mean, it, that's the proudest moment as a parent, like rather than watching TV, rather than like looking on Instagram, you are doing something really beneficial. Your kid is growing up, seeing you doing that amazing thing. Over the weekends, I was doing probably like waking up earlier than the household mm -hmm. and doing like five, six, seven hours a day if I can. Of course, if there's a kid activity that you have to join, I was like going to kid parties and stuff. So between that i think i managed to do at least 20 hours a week yeah. and then it went up to 30 hours at some point i never i don't think i ever passed 30 over 30 yet. it was really hard for me yeah, yeah. But I, know I, I think i'm on the same boat yeah some people even though 40 but they are usually single people or people don't have kids they have more time yeah. so yeah to take the advantage of that if you don't have kids or if you're single. <laughs> well, that's something I saw um, some people recommending. I'm on this mothers uh, in architecture group and um, they were saying like even creating flashcards and having it be interactive with your kids and, and a way to kind of, you know, study, but you're still involving them. Um, but I agree, like I, I was looking at it as, you know, having them see me study and, and go for a really, really hard goal that I was passionate about was really beneficial and something that I knew wouldn't last forever. Um, and maybe they won't even remember. I mean, my daughter was 10 months old when I first took my exam and she was three, around three when I took my last. So she might not even remember, but I feel like there's still a little bit of an impression in her of, you know, and even now being an architect and can, tell her the work that I did just because I got pregnant and need to cancel everything. Um, so I do think that you can try to make time and involve them and know that again, it's not going to last forever. You know, this, even with the rolling yeah. clock. <laughs> there's somebody asked the question, would you like me to answer it? They say, or do you want to, do you want to finish? Your I was going to, maybe we chat and then we can go through them. Yeah. So, then, but we can that's we can go through them now yeah somebody says okay everybody a lot of people says thank you thank you guys i yes thank you everyone for being yeah. here yeah for being so nice and like putting the like note uh somebody says how do you manage how would you manage a fail do you dissect the score report or not look too far into it i dissect everything <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because i am that person and i I, I read into it. I have a blog post actually on my website that I, the, the math that I used to do for myself, reading my score reports, I shared it with, with people. Actually, I even created that for other, because I only had that math created for PPD and PDD. So I extended it to all six exams. I looked into it. I don't think they're useless. I know there's a, it's so easy to just, in my opinion, it's just too easy to like say, oh, trash them, useless. Like, I don't like it. I, I know they are not great and they are not like 100% like reliable, 
but I still like to read into them a little bit. Like for example, if there's a section, there is like the 35% of the exam and I did the level four is the worst, right? I keep confusing them. If I did yeah. level four in that, in that. No, section, level four is the, I think the best. Yeah. Wait. If I did the worst in that, yeah. then I should go back and study that, right? Definitely. I cannot just ignore that. It's the, it's the fact there that I, that was the fact for building code for me. Like on my first PPD fail, I saw on the score report that I badly failed. And during the exam, I felt it, that I, I am failing the code. And so coming home and ignoring that would not be the best decision, to be honest with you. So you cannot ignore that. But if you are like so close, it's like one of them is like the almost passing, the other one's like passed, there's no fails, like there's no like significantly like failing section, then maybe, yeah, do not think, overthink that and like keep studying. You are probably very close. It's like maybe probably like five questions away, three questions away. Some people send me their score reports. We do the math together. They're like three questions away. So at that point, I think what you need to do is really go back, repeat all of your notes and do practice questions, like crazy practice mm -hmm. questions because you are so close. Uh, not maybe too much reading at that point. So how did I fail with the uh, deal with fail? Not great at the beginning. It took me a while. Uh, it was, I haven't been smart enough about that fail guys, because I did not have a good example. No one told me what I'm going to tell you now. Um, do not compare yourself to others. Over compare, let's say. Mm -hmm. Or do not compare yourself to your earlier student life, your own self. This is a different process. You can be a star student all your entire career, like student life. You can be like A++ student forever and then fail this exam six times. It happens. And I know many of you guys are have been great students. So do not compare that. Do not compare to others. What I did was with the fail, first I rushed to take those two exams because I passed the first four. I wanted to be done. Do not rush. And then after that rush, after the fail, the rush made me even feel more sad about that because uh, now that I just don't fail, I also felt behind the timeline, but that imaginary timeline that I created for myself for no good reason, because my clock still had four more years, but I was feeling like, oh, I'm running out of time. So do not create that fear for yourself. If your clock has enough time, do not do that to yourself. Do not rush. Take it on your own time. Do not listen every uh, so good to be true scenario that you see online, okay? And do not listen also to the worst case scenarios on the online. You might be, probably you are gonna be between those two. So set your expectation right and admit that failure is part of this and it is likely okay and once you go there to take the exam do not treat it as a life and death matter okay it took me forever to learn this but once i learned it i passed pdd the third time i finally felt like i learned it i internalized that this is another test it's another try i still have three years on my clock I can take this last exam 10 more times in that time period. And in one of those 10 times, I'm going to pass. So why anxiety? Why feeling so down? Why cramping up yourself and spending the night sleepless before the exam, right? You have 10 more times. Nobody's chasing you. Mm -hmm. And yes, I know it's your life. Yes, I know you are missing out parties, family gatherings, friends, all of that. But you are... if at the end of the day, you are doing something amazing for yourself. This is something to be proud of. The more you spend time on this, the, the prouder you are actually, because you are showing everybody like how resilient you are, how, how hardworking, how, how, how much willing power, willpower you have. So once I finally, I kept chanting this in my brain to myself for months and eventually it set in and I, truly with my heart and my brain believed in this idea that this is another practice exam and I have more takes. I can do this. Then I passed. 
So you have to get there. And then failing is also gonna, not going to hit you as hard when you do that. But if you are my earlier version, like my earlier version, you are like, oh, this is life or death. I have to pass this. I have to finish these exams. Go there like sweating, sleepless and like anxious. And then you fail. It's, it, it feels like a boss hit you. And then it's the worst feeling in the world. And it's so hard to come back from that. So it, it's in you. Find a peaceful state of mind inside you. Some people meditate, some people pray, some people do therapy and some people talk to their significant others or parents to like really, because saying it out loud help you. It's not just in your brain, say it out loud, say it to your best friend, say it to your husband, wife, that, you know what? This is not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do this. Eventually it's going to happen. If this failure does not define me, this is not who am I, this is not my career. And Think about it. You have five years to pass these exams. Failing, what, it, what does failing mean? Failing means that it's gone. That ship has sailed. There's no way of bringing it back. This is not that, right? So that ship has not sailed. You still have time. You can keep trying. And you are going to get that. Everybody gets it. I, I know people who took PPD eight times and passed. So when I was studying, I was constantly looking at the comments online forums, looking where, looking at the number of like how many attempts people are doing for PPD and PDD. So the number four was like, kind of like, I'm like, guys, I think number four is the number. Like <laughs> nobody is like, uh, it looks like majority of people are taking it four times, the worst case scenario. And there's like maybe fifth time. So whenever people saw like five and over online, they were sharing the post with me. Look, somebody did six times. And I'm like, ah, no. <laughs> There's always something to compare it to, but I, I totally agree that um, once you kind of take the exam off the pedestal and, and know that it's not that big of a deal, I mean, you know, we, we know it is a big deal, but you know, if you, if you go in with that attitude, it changes the mindset because you're, you have like a clear clear mind about it. And I'll never forget. I mean, well, so I'm going to answer his question too, a little bit from my point of view, just that first fail was really devastating. I went to lunch afterwards and like cried by myself <laughs> and like was Googling like, oh my gosh, like failing the ARE and all this stuff and just felt really down about it. And I don't know if it was after, I think it was after a, another fail or something uh, for another exam, but my husband was like, well, nobody really cares. And I was like, well, but that's so like, that's really mean to say, like, this is a really, really big deal. And he's like, yeah, but like, no one, once you're licensed, no one's going to ask you how many times you failed or no one's going to know that you failed. Like exactly what you said. It's not failure. If you, if you keep going, if you stop because you say, Oh, I failed that I'm not going to go back and do it. Then that's, failing but it's kind of like I think they should almost change the word uh like better like next time or something yeah Yeah. like trying trying is a better word like another trying another try yeah I did another try it doesn't work somebody has another question it says oh I missed it uh let me say just real quick before we do that one I just real quick about the um the score report I do want to get I want to give a real quick advice for that because my first fail that I did, I, you know, I sulked and then I, I went back and I studied based on the score report, but what I learned and what I did from then on out is I would go back into my car from after taking it and I would kind of brain dump everything into my notes and not, not to share with anyone only for myself, but just to um, kind of think back to anything that like, really stumped me or felt like I needed to dive deeper into before I even saw the score report. And then when I saw the score report, it was helpful. So I wasn't having to feel like I needed to start from square one studying. I could um, kind of focus on, on the areas that I myself felt like I needed help on and then also the score report. So I agree with you that I, I don't think it's just a, a waste to look at it. Maybe it's not the most helpful in some areas, but it is a way to not feel overwhelmed. Like you have to start and study everything. So like limited, the, the information that, that we receive from NCARP is so limited. So mm-hmm. there's a tiny bit that they just <laughs> leave behind. So I don't want to lose that one too, to be honest with you. It feels like wasteful to do that in my opinion. I also stay, I also suggest everyone to stay away like super certain judgments about anything out there. Why? Because something that doesn't work for you might work for me or others. Mm-hmm. So 
And if you hear that somebody is like using super certain like judges, don't listen to this, do this, stay away from that a little bit because why um, everybody has a different, like different path, paths for, for different people. So yeah, something that doesn't work for you might work for others. Yeah. But at the, what, at the time when we are testing, sometimes it's not our best selves, guys. I was like that too. We are angry. Uh, we can be a little mean, you know, that's normal. Don't be hard on yourself. It is normal. Sometimes people email me uh, after they fail and their email tone is a little like harsh. <laughs> I, I, I just respond. I know where they are coming from. I, I absolutely know how they feel. And I felt the exact same way. You just want a, a, a punch, punching bag, basically. <laughs> yeah. You are so angry. So I just let them to be. And then they come back like, a couple months later, they pass and they're like, I'm so sorry. I read my earlier email. I was too mean. Like, why did I? I'm so sorry that I, I'm like, that's okay. I, I know. <laughs> I know you're not a mean person. It's just this process makes you angry and it's okay. Like, it's But okay. it's nice for them to have someone to be able to kind of go to that understands that. Yeah. It's not. My husband also gets the, uh, the, it's on his uh, cell phone too, because we, I just don't want to have in one place. And once we are out, I don't want to miss any emails or anything. So we can res respond fast. I set up on his email, uh, on his cell phone too. And he sometimes reads and he's like, oh, this is so mean. And I'm like, no, 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 they're just angry. <laughs> it's, okay. it's, it's not mean, it's okay. I, I know they are, I know that person is probably the, like the sweetest person on earth, but they are just so, because I was exactly like that. Like I was not my best self. It's, some, not, not the entire process, but like some portions of the, the whole journey. I wasn't also not my best self. If I broke anybody's heart out there, I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I probably, um, it's normal. <laughs> so Tony, since it's kind of on this same subject, um, Tony says that he often has trouble sleeping the night before the exams. I Any tips with that? You, Tony, uh, you know what, what I did? I noticed that I scheduled the exams early morning mm -hmm. and I'm not a good sleeper and I go there sleepless. So I had this, this epiphany in my brain one, one day. And I'm like, why am I scheduling this so early? Let's check the other hours. So I found that there is 11 a.m. And I'm like, actually, this is best because I wasn't able to study between like midnight to 2 or 3 a.m. But eventually my body was just losing the control and I was falling asleep like 3 a.m. ish. And then I had to wake up like 6, 7 a.m. again because test was starting like 8, 8.30. And with that, that three hour sleep is not enough. So I scheduled for like, I guess, 11 a.m. The ones that I passed, PPD and PDD was, I guess one is 11, the other one was like 11.30, something like that. Perfect. 3 a.m. fall asleep, <laughs> even if you're so anxious. And then 8, 8 9 a.m. you wake up and then you go to test center. I highly recommend that. It, it worked for me. I don't know. Yeah, I... I did like the really early exams because I felt like it, I don't know, it was, it was early enough where not a lot of noise was able to enter me, enter my brain. But I also um, was pretty a big advocate of actually not really even studying the day before, like, like two or three days before just putting it out of mind and being like, okay, I've, I've done all the work you know, I, I've got this and maybe doing like a couple little flashcards or maybe last minute, like quick 10, 10 question practice quizzes, but kind of allowing myself that relaxation even before. Um, if I were to do it again, I think that worked well, but I think I might push it a little bit later and do some sort of like yoga or exercise or something yeah. beforehand, just to like expel that that those nerves i think that would be I good one more thing i was also starting let's say my exam is on thursday right i was starting to sleep earlier uh, like f starting from monday usually i go bed bed let's say 11 right i was starting to go to bed like nine mm -hmm. so i can get a little bit more rest leading to the exam a little bit more also try i was trying to eat a little bit better yeah and yeah so the, during the exam anxiety makes all your body go crazy so i was like trying to do my best. I also did an exercise. That's another, yeah, I think that that's a good point. Yeah. Um, 20 Bordortmund, sorry I'm, if I butcher, butcher your guys' uh, handles, but um, asked what was the most challenging exam to study for and pass? He's half, they are halfway through. Even though I took it, I took PDD three times and PPD two times. I think PPD was the most challenging. And to me, I agree. For me, yeah. 
I took um, PPD three times and PDD twice too. <laughs> well, mine is opposite actually. I, oh. I took PPD second time. Oh. I still feel it was the most challenging one because it was too broad. Mm -hmm. It was a little crazy. It could be anything and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was also a little matter of luck which I hate the luck element in everything in life. I don't like it when it, when things come to luck, I hate it. I, I want it to be hard work. And then it was a little bit like a little more than a little bit, actually like 25% luck. This, because it's too broad. The luck element is this, it's too broad. It's everything. Basically. It, I feel like it covers all six exams. Yes. And, and, and then what are they going to ask me The set, the batch of questions that I get, aligns with what I studied and I what I know best was the luck portion. So the one I passed the second time, it was more like PA and I had good time with PA. So I got lucky. So I'm like, oh, jackpot. I'm going to pass this one because during the exam, I I felt that it's like, okay, this these topics are good. It aligns with my experience. First time it was like, it felt like it's an like aliens prepared the exam and I don't know the language at all, anything like <laughs> anything about it. <laughs> PDD was harder for me, I mean, harder for me to pass because it included a little bit more memorization. I'm not good at memorization. I'm a logic person. I need to understand the idea behind it. When people make me, things make me memorize, I dread it. So it took me a little longer to memorize stuff in the exam. The questions were much shorter. So being a good test taker, is not doesn't mean much on PDD. Yeah. Because questions are shorter, more direct, more to the point. And if you know it, you pass it. You don't know it, you fail. So you need to know it. You need to memorize it. You need to really remember it. So or you need to really learn and understand it. So that was also that's why it took three times, I think. Eventually I kind of like really internalized and digested the whole content. And I'm like, okay, now I feel comfortable. But then that's also why I started telling myself when I failed. I'm, it's just going to make me that much better of an architect because I didn't really grasp the un, the information completely. And so each time I understood it a little bit deeper. So now as an architect, I feel more confident in certain things. So sometimes I'm almost in retrospect, you know, um, appreciative of those fails just so that it didn't like, I didn't blaze through it. And then now I'm not, I'm not confident in certain areas. So I would have never said that back then, but in retrospect, I will now so um yeah there's a couple questions about like foreign architects and 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 the I mean, study for that yeah. so that might be good for uh i mean it, it it's a little scary at the beginning yes it's it's everything is too different if you are not good at english uh, i mean it's my second it's not my native language too, obviously but um that that takes time too because the books if you're never educated in, in, in states in English, uh, it takes a little time to understand the language of the books, the language of the exam. Uh, and if your English is not great, that also extra time you should include. It's not impossible. Actually, many of the people that I see on Facebook forum and communities and everywhere, it's like, it feels like majority is foreigner and not non-native speakers. So apparently people are somehow doing it. It takes longer, it requires more energy, but it is not impossible. Like I did it. I mean, if I did it, you can you can do it too. Why not? Just uh, apply for your local state, uh, go to their website, look at their requirements, create an NCARB account, obviously. Each state has different requirements to how to start your exam and then go from there. And once your st state allows you to take the exam, just I would suggest start with the NCARB handbook. That's the most important point, I guess, of tonight is, guys, I am a third party, right? I am selling questions. It's a business. I am making money off, off of this. But do not start with any third party, including me. Always, this exam is not prepared by me or anybody else. It's prepared by NCAR. So they are running this show. Whenever you are take, this is the golden rule of standardized tests. Even if you hate the party who prepares the standardized test, the golden rule, who is me? Who is responsible of this exam? Who is preparing this exam? Who is this entity? Who is this body? Look at what they provide you first. They give you a great, I mean, the, the, the handbook is not great, but the reference matrix at the end is great. I loved it because it tells you which books 
uh, to read and what content to, to focus on, right? So you know that you have the books, you have the chapters. It looks a little too much, right? Like, do, uh, am I supposed to read all of this? Mm -hmm. It depends. It depends on your process. Start lightly, build your pace up. If you keep taking the same exam over and over again, yes, start to read all of them. Maybe eventually, maybe you are going to read all of those books in that matrix because it took you more than others. Uh, for foreigners, that might be a little reality, guys. We need to study more than native speakers because our brain, I mean, at this point, my brain stopped translating from Turkish to English. It's been like eight years almost. But still, I know some people has to do it still in their brain. The couple languages are just moving around. So it takes a longer time. Uh, it's normal. Just take a deep breath, start, start with the handbook, reference material, go from there, read your books first, then use the third party to supplement it, okay? Not to replace it. Shortcuts rarely work. And if they worked, guys, average pass rate would not be 2.7 years per person. So that means that remember, always always when you are reading a forum post or anything remember that if that is that it was that easy an average person would not pass 2.7 years these people are not less smart than you okay that's the average there they have their architects they went to great schools they are like you you are i mean we are have all of us very even though we don't like to admit but we are very similar to each other our capacities are very similar so just remember that and give yourself time. I think that's great. And I think that, um, I think that's a good point too, is that even though there's a lot of flack going around about NCARB and about stuff like, you know, the, the handbook, I mean, it is pretty two dimensional and, and such a, de a dense exam, but it's, it's really, the uh, foundation where you should always go back. So go through it. Don't only use it, of course, but I always kind of like would go back as a reference because sometimes I'd forget, oh, shoot, I didn't even touch on this one subject. And so the handbook's always a good one to go back to. But tell us a little bit more for, you know, I think a lot of people know about your your questions and um I've heard so much success for people going through the exams. Um, so give a little bit about those, but also like, how did you develop it and why? And um, yeah. Thanks for asking that. It's actually a, a I, I, I like that story because it's happened so coincidentally and like surprisingly and unexpectedly. Uh, like it's just life. You say like you plan and things never follow that plan, right? And then those other plans kick in and you're like, oh, okay, actually let's do that. <laughs> so it's exactly, it was exactly like that. I started studying and I am, like I said, I have, I have taken a lot of standardized tests in Turkey. So the process in Turkey was like this. Uh, they, they, they taught you a, con, con, like a, a topic at school, right? And they would give you immediately after that a, a test with 20 questions, like 25 questions, 15 questions. And that was your homework, basically. So and, and many of them. And you would end up doing hundreds and hundreds of questions every week as part of your homework. So that's how I grew up. That's the, that's a culture, educational culture that I grew up in. So I, I, when I started studying for, for ARES, I, I wanted, I craved for that experience again. And that's how I learned, right? I read first, I listen first, and then I do practice questions to solidify that, that knowledge, that information. It wasn't there and just reading and reading in English was too hard for me and I couldn't retain it. So the first week of the first exam, I'm re studying reading Architectural Handbook of Professional Practice. And I'm like, this is just flying away. I was in the balcony, I remember. And I'm like, it was like springtime. And I'm like, I'm reading at the, at the balcony because it's quieter there. And I'm like, this is just flying into the air. I feel like it's like I'm reading and it just goes into like out, out in the universe and it's just nothing stays. And I'm like, I should find something. This doesn't work. So I, I noticed that I, I signed up for designer hacks, PPI. Um, uh, what else? And Black, uh, not, not Black, but Ballast, Ballast questions. I purchased all of them. I'm like, okay, these are great, but it's like I did the math. It's like maybe 300 questions overall. I'm like, oh, this is not enough. I need a thousand questions. So what am I going to do? I subscribed for a 
quiz making website and I started to create my own questions. Whatever I read, a key phrase, an important, a highlighted topic, something in bold, right, in the text. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess this is important. And I was comparing the handbook because handbook has uh, some, some bullet points for each content area, right? And I was like, okay, I think this hits that bullet point. This sounds similar. So all of that, I started to create my own questions just for my own self, selfishly, not telling anyone <laughs> that I have them. I was just writing, writing, writing. It ended up being like at the end of PA, I guess it was over 500 and no one knew about it. Then I noticed that actually a couple of people are struggling about PA on NCAR forum. I saw a lot of people are struggling with PA. So as I, as I just, I don't know, Curtis, so like feeling for them. I am like, I emailed them just like, I'm like, I have some questions that I prepared more myself and I passed PA. I think they were helpful. Would you like to just take a look? So five, 10 people, maybe like that started to look at them, but it just stayed there. Then I, with failing PPD and PDD, I did more and more and more questions for myself. I joined Young Architect Bootcamp after failing to uh, PDD twice. I joined there and the community was very helpful. And then, but I also started sharing them with the community, the Young Architect Bootcamp community. And they started to see that and everybody started to tell me like, oh, this is great. Why don't you give me the link? Give me the link, give me the link. So it just grew from there. And when, when I passed the exams, I shut down the links and because I was done with the exams, but people did not stop emailing me. I was at some point I was getting, and it was my personal email box, was getting like 50 emails every day. Like I heard from a friend of a friend of a friend that you had some questions you were sharing with them. Could you please, could you please do that? And then I'm like, I cannot do that. They were just like, here is what the deal was. I prepared for them for myself. So they were not presentable and I did not want to be responsible of them. Like be, what if people would fail, right? I don't know, like it, it was scary. And then I said, guys, if I'm going to do this, it should be actually people told me that you should do it as a business months ago, but I never wrapped my head around it. But once I was done and the emails nonstop coming and I hated saying no to them. I'm awful at saying no, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's something that I need to learn. I couldn't. And then I, I said, OK, I guess I have to do this. So the, the overwhelming interest of the community kind of like pushed me to do this but how was I going to do it I I tried so many times guys sitting down and like working on them because the thing is I wanted to pro provide great feedbacks great feedbacks meaning a re reference to a book and a chapter that was my it was giving me such a hard time and I was doing other practice questions on the market that they did not have they were saying like this is the correct answer no why where does it come from which book did you read that where can I go read further about that because Yes, I understand this portion of that information, but I need to know much more than that. And but it wasn't there. So you need to go do your own crazy like research on the books, try to find which chapter, which section should I read more about that. I said, if I'm going to do something, it's going to give people a book, a chapter, a section, a graphic, a page, like to the, to the point that they can and go and read the whole thing because question only captures a tiny. It's it's this screenshot of a moment in that in the whole like whole, whole frame right so you can only capture a little bit portion of that you cannot capture the whole thing so you need to go read the whole thing on your own and uh, come back and do the question again it's gonna set in you are well, gonna retain that information and that's the whole point of the aries too is you, you can't just memorize the answer to a question you have to get understand why you got it wrong and then really dive in deep and that's the way that you'll pass the exam sometimes people take the same exam three four five times is the reason because they have great memory it becomes it's it's a curse because they remember it i mean they think that they remember entire details of the questions of the ex in the exam with the options they come home they write all of that down and then they go snooping around in the forums asking people what is this what is that what is this what is that trying to find the exact answer because next time they see the question they can answer correctly that's a huge mistake guys don't do it and carp constantly changes questions there's no way you can remember the whole question and the way you interpret and explain it to someone else they understand it it's like what is that called in english i don't know like you say something to somebody's ears at the end it comes out totally different it's telephone 
Yeah, telephone game. Yeah. It's like the telephone game. You mm -hmm. tell your friend, your friend goes to another friend. It changes, changes, and they come back and they say, next time you do it, answer that. I don't want to, <laughs> I, I don't want to say that, but I, I have seen on a an, on NCAR forum actually, somebody saying another person like answer that like next time, kind of like not super openly, but implying that next time I said, and it was wrong. I know it's wrong. I know that question. I know which question they're talking about. I mean, they are implying it, but I know it. I have seen it on the exam too. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, that's wrong because he was telling the story wrong. And the person was with that perception, of course, going to give you a answer that they think it's correct, but it is not. Then you're going to fail again and then fail again and fail again. So come home, write down the contents mm -hmm. that you saw on the exam then dive like exactly like Brian said, like dive deep into those, try to understand. And next time you go to test center, they ask you another question about that content. You are gonna, okay, let me try to understand what the question is actually asking. Read slowly and hunt for some keywords that is repeating between the question and the correct option or options. That is very critical for any standardized test. So the, the correct uh, option and the question have similar tone and language, guys. Mm -hmm. So when you master that, you become kind of a better test taker. That's how you become a better test taker. It doesn't work on the PDD exam much though, because again, the questions and answers are too short, <laughs> not too much to fish for. But mm -hmm. PA and PPD, it really works actually. But it takes a little time to get there and have a grip on that technique, basically, yeah. Do you have time for a couple extra yeah. questions? Because um, this one reminds me what you were telling me a little bit earlier, but, um, oh, where did it go? Oh, uh, what is your experience with studying for all three or at least PPD and PDD together? So I know you have- I, a I don't recommend studying anything together because I, in my brain, they are different scales. Uh, PA is a site and um, in a larger scale, like so you are looking, uh, think about yourself as a drone, as a drone, you are up, like, I don't know, like uh, a kilometer up looking down the site. So that's your perspective for PA. And for PDD, you are really zoomed in and looking at a pipe detail. So my brain is not capable of doing that jump, guys, mm -hmm. back and forth. I tried it, it didn't work for me. So I started at a larger scale, went down smaller, or you can start with a smaller scale and go larger if you are uh, kind of that person. So again, there's not one formula and my method might not be the best method for you. It might work or not work. So try different methods. But my understanding is when you study these exams together, it gets confusing. Too much content to cover. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you finish that time, you're gonna start forgetting the, the things that you studied during the first week. So I uh, dissected them into pieces. And instead of swallowing my whole meal at once, I just eat it in small portions. I, I, that's what I recommend. But of course, again, something else might work for you. <laughs> you do you, it's okay. You don't need to do exactly what I say, but I'm just saying that be open to try other things. Yeah, because a lot of people do recommend or, or I've seen it recommended to take them within a week or two apart or something, but they are so intense that the good thing is, is when you're studying for one and you start to study for the other one, there's going to be overlap. So it's not all brand new information, but it's a different caliber or a different scale, like Alif says. So it's, it's, it, it's, putting those two together. I don't know, for me, it was just like way too much to push into the brain at one time. Um, but the good news, I think with almost every one of these exams is what you're studying for, for one exam is not going to totally go to waste. It's going to build upon, or you may see little snippets of it in another exam. So, but yeah, still taking them as separate. It's not lost, right? Mm -hmm. the, all the time that you spend on PA is going to help you a lot with PPD or the time you spend on PP is gonna help you a lot with PDD. But I like to kind of build things in time as a person. I cannot do that jump, like I said, like from, from a smaller scale to larger scale and coming back to mid scale and going back to large scale, mm -hmm. zooming into small scale, I, it was too confusing for me. I tried and I think it was one of the worst 
uh, advices that I, I followed, taking those exams, studying together and taking them close apart, uh, did not work for me. And there's a certain type uh, of person, I think it works, uh, but not it's not the majority. Majority is like, I feel like more like me. Yeah, I, I think I agree too. And, and yeah. like you said earlier, you'll find the unicorn people who, you know, pass all exams in one week or, or something like that. But there's always an exception to the rule. And I think the majority of us are here working on these for a couple of years and, you know, having a couple fails and maybe getting some on their first try, but it's a process and I mean, being them, it's, it's, it's a great success. They should be proud of. I understand them going on online forums on a personal level. I do understand them on going on personal forums and um, sharing their experience. They are great, amazing success story, right? Bragging. Mm -hmm. about, I would do exactly the same thing, guys, if I pass my exams in like six months or like six weeks, whatever that is. I am not judging them. I, I totally, it's a human condition. That's totally understandable. Like if you have a great success, you would like to share it. Mm -hmm. However, I feel like it affects the rest of the community a little badly. I wish they would be a little more sensitive when they are sharing an experience, but it would, it's not, it's not fair to expect that from them. I know that too. Uh, but, but when, when they do that, uh, my, one of my doctors once told me something amazing. She said, people who post online usually are either the best experience or the worst experience. Mm -hmm. The majority does not post. Majority is in between. So always remember that, guys, okay? When you see a post saying that, some people don't tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. Some people are a little, like I had a colleague who studied the she was in 4.0 at the time i wasn't able to test and she was testing and she passed the seven exams in less than a year and it was amazing so all those years at the office i thought that she just this amazing person that she passed when i started taking my exams and i couldn't pass ppd and pdd i ran into her again and i'm like how did you do that like so fast you were in the office next to us you didn't complain how she's like oh actually i forgot to tell i studied another year, the entire year before studying, even starting taking the first exam, she studied one whole year and wow. then second year to during the exam. So two years. So we had the same time frame. I also took the exams in two years and she also took two years. And I'm like, but you never mentioned it. She's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, like kind of, because we like to look fancy and mm -hmm. smart and like cool, right? So it's yeah, it's easy to it's easy to not it's easy to leave that information out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she left that information out, which was critical. And I was beating down my on myself. I'm like, oh, she was so smart, anyways. Like I'm not that smart. So see that don't do that. They are not giving you the entire story sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So what are your top three or however many or whatever top tips that you would give for either someone just starting the exams or maybe in the middle of it, or maybe has put it on pause for a few years and wanting to get back in it. I think, I think set the right expectation at the beginning. I think this is a great advice, anything in life. When you start things with a, with the right, just right expectation, the happiness is unavoidable and you are not going to be sad or defeated by the process. If you know that this is not an easy process, it takes about two years, something or three years, and it, you need to read some and you need to be committed and you need to give up some personal lifetime to this and failing is part of it, right? And your experience might not be like others and you might end up finishing in six months too, right? But you may end up finishing in three years too. So between that, that time, frame you set the right expectation start tell your friends and loved ones and everybody surrounding you that this is what you're going to do or or if they're stressing you out don't tell but just the close ones and then just start it right that's the setting the right expectation is something very important i think uh trying different paths so if you took the the exam once let's say you followed this one path you said you know what i'm just going to read bell's book do a couple practice questions and go take the exam or just going to watch YouTube videos or Black Spectacle or Amber Book videos and I'm going to take the exam. Do it. Go take the exam. If you fail, come home and try to change things a little bit. Okay. Or let's say if you started reading one book and 
and did a couple of practice questions, went there and failed, come home, don't read the same book, read another book. Mm -hmm. Okay, on top of that. So there are different, like, if you try taking PPD and PDD close by and failed, don't take it again like that. Now, next time, give a little time between those. Okay, so try different methods and strategies out there. Uh, I have a couple blog posts on my homepage about like how to take standardized tests, how to pass PPD and PDD. I should write about the PA too. There were a couple questions I want to touch actually about PA. Yeah. And then that was the second, I think, try different different strategies. Don't just think, like if sometimes people email me and they say like, I have been this doing this and taking this exam. This is my fourth time and I couldn't pass. So I asked them, what did you do so far? They keep telling me that they read the same book or did the same thing, whatever. I'm like, it didn't work for you. Like, do not do the same thing and expect different results, right? So spice it up a little bit. And then again, do not over compare yourself. Not just to others, but also to your earlier version. Uh, you're a different person now, maybe. In, life is harder. When you were a student, you were just a student. Now you have other responsibilities. You have to work. You have kids, you have marriage, whatever relationship, parents you need to take care of. Maybe you are sick, you know, maybe you are going through some other hard, hardships in life. When you were a student in high school, life was much more easier. Your parents were taking care of the home. You did not need to worry about putting bread on table, right? So a lot of things now are involved in, life, in your life. So cut yourself some slack and give yourself more time. Do not rush. Nobody's chasing you. Nobody's behind you. You have five years to finish the process. And you don't need to fulfill this prophecy of finishing six exams in six months, whatever. That. <laughs> Do not push yourself into that. And hopefully it's going to be at the end. Hopefully you're going to feel like the way me, Brian, and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of other people uh, feels. You're going to feel accomplished. You're going to feel success. And, and you're going to feel happy about this endeavor that you achieved. And you're just going to be proud of yourself. And your loved ones are going to be proud of you too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that kind of goes into what um, someone asked of just like, how did your life change afterwards? And I think that it's like, there was just a lot of peace that came with it. Yeah. I mean, my life obviously changed a lot because of the website. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I got an increase at office. That's what happened. And it wasn't a bad one. It was a good increase. Like, 15% or so, which our office never did before. Like it was usually like three to 5% yearly. I, mine was almost like 15%, which was super satisfying. I loved that they appreciated it. And if you feel valued, it was good. A lot of people start their own practice, right? And even if you don't start your own practice now, it is a plan B for future. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great plan B. And my motivation to start taking the exams, which I forgot to mention was, being a foreigner and being a woman um, in the industry, it's, I feel like being a foreigner kind of was a disadvantage because when you start a talk, you have an accent. So people understand, right? And then they know that you did not go to school in US. So you get kind of looked down on you a little bit. So I wanted to have that piece of paper to prove that I'm equal and equally like uh, good at what I'm doing. I know it sounds a little unfortunate, but it is what it is, right? And again, women are underpaid and undervalued in, in many professions, unfortunately. So there was a little bit of like feminism involved in uh, trying to break the stigma around being a woman and uh, being, a, being a foreigner. And then the last thing was, I, I was thinking when I turned like 50 or I don't know, and older, what if I don't want to work for somebody else and I want to work for myself? And mm -hmm. at, at later in the year, I'm not saying it's impossible, but like later in life, I said, I don't want to deal with the exams. So I wanted to finish it in my thirties. That was the, that was the motivation. So it changed, it, mine changed maybe a little more extremely than others. But I think that feel of accomplishment, that boost of, a little bit of ego maybe <laughs> was, was great. Yeah. Everybody who doesn't like it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And who also just doesn't like to be done. I see all the time. People are like, here, I passed my exam yesterday. Take all my books. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I need them out of my sight. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to burn them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. 
<laughs> was there some other questions that you were saying that you wanted to ask? A question: What's like what does concentrate con concentrate on? Give me one second. I had some notes for like so I can refer to. Yeah, I can go for, through here too. For for PA maybe like uh, so P P D a uh, PA okay. So I think for PA there were like a couple of books that I uh, even after the exam I felt like they were super relevant one of them is not spoken of much uh, called planning and urban design standards I skimmed through that book I did not read the whole thing before my exam but during the exam and after the exam when I come home I noticed that that book had a lot of like covering a lot of questions uh, that I've seen on the exam I was lucky enough to look at the graphics and skim through. So that was very helpful. It is a very easy book. It has a lot of graphics, more than text. It's easier to understand. I liked it. Uh, Site planning and design handbook. I had hard time to read that book. It was so hard for me to read. I don't know, maybe it's a foreigner thing or maybe the book is not like easy, but I powered through reading the whole book. I think that was also super, super helpful uh problem seeking book and programming primer architecture programming primer i skimmed that one too and i skimmed the parts that i feel like people are mentioning worth like worth the read kind of online uh which was like it's it's a very easy book it's not very long and it's again too many plans and diagrams and graphics easier to read i highly suggest that sunwind light was a little struggle to read but i'm glad that i I read that book mm -hmm. and especially the, the couple parts that that book is built like this guys you need to kind of like decode it um it talks about strategies okay and then it like general strategies about different sites or climates and i don't know building types and formations let's say organizations and then it goes into certain climate types and utilizes each strategy differently for that certain climate type. So first read those key general strategies and then read different climate types, okay? So you don't need to maybe read the whole thing, but if you read it smart doing that comparison, okay, what was the key concepts for this site and I don't know, this, this condition? Oh, these are like bullet points are given. Okay, now go check what happens when it's an arid or temperate climate then I think that was very helpful to me. If you are, again, if you hate that book and you're like, you know what, there's no way I can read that book. Heating, cooling, lighting is mm -hmm. a great substitute. It's a little too much for PA. So you, you don't need to read those chapters related to electrical, uh, lighting, uh, or mechanical systems. But skip those parts, focus on more uh, sustainability and environment sections, okay? It explains the wind, sun, and a natural light, uh, passive heating and cooling techniques. It has a chapter 15 or 16, I guess, at the end, summarizing all the chapters with bullet points. Uh, before the exam, it's a great thing to do. It's just, it's just bullet points. Uh, read that couple pages of summary. So if you are absolutely like, you, you tried sun and light and it didn't work, you can try this as a substitute. And I think, yeah, Secretary of Interiors, the standards uh, for treatment of historic properties. So it is a couple hundred pages PDF free online. You go to mps.go and download it. And that one, do not read the whole thing. Just, again, it has some tables at the beginning of each restoration, renovation, uh, reconstruction, all of that. So. Uh, read, the, read the tables at the beginning, okay? So do you don't need to read the whole thing. Do a lot of practice questions, whatever you have works. I have PA questions. Um, Eric Walker has good PA, PA questions. I, uh, after I uh, started the website, I solved them. Uh, designer Hex is good. A ballast is good. Uh, everything is good, whatever you have, okay? I, I tried everything, PPI, everything and anything. And try to... Try to do some puzzle-like questions and the practice questions because there's no books. I couldn't find any books to have those kind of questions. What you can do is kind of a little fun activity too. Maybe download an like an app that does like those like brain activity apps. Mm. 
that has like some IQ kind of questions that like flips the sheeps around and asks you like, how do you reach from one to three or like one to four? I love those kind of things to do on my like own personal time. I think that was a lot of them in includes geometrical shapes. And since we are architect, I feel like I'm I'm really good at them. So it kind of like I like it being good at something. So I keep doing them. So do them, guys. It's really helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the questions, I mean, and you're gonna have fun. It's like 10 minutes a day. And it's also good for your memory, like it's for your brain too. Yeah, it's true. That would help with like adjacency stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, mm -hmm. it's gonna help. Oh, a little bit of IBC too, but not too much. You don't need to go crazy with the building code. Uh, maybe chapter 10, you know, it's means of egress chapter is important. Chapter three, the occupancy types, and maybe chapter five, heights and yeah. So, but for PPD, you need to go crazy with the IBC. You need to really know IBC for PPD. Yeah. PA is a little lighter than that, much lighter than that. Uh, I guess that was the PA question that I saw. Everybody says thank you, and I thank you, uh, you guys. Thank you so much for everything, for your support. It's been really pleasure to do this business with you guys. I couldn't imagine this in, in my wildest dreams. I had no idea that this was going to happen. It wasn't <laughs> planned. It wasn't anything like that. And it's just such a happy a coincidence that happened. And I'm really grateful for all of your support. I know because guys, I don't have any affiliate agreements with anyone. Uh, I am categorically denying to do so. I have been offered by many, many, many people, everybody that you know. And I said, no, even at the beginning, it was the scariest thing to do. People said, we can promote your product if you give us cuts, if you like whatever, even before I launched the website. And I said no to everyone, even though I spent a lot of money and I was like, oh my God, if this doesn't work, I was, I'm gonna be the dumbest person on planet saying no to everyone just to do the, what I feel right. And it sounds a little arrogant, I know, but it didn't feel right and I didn't want to do it. And I didn't want to start my business with something that I don't like, you know? So that being said, your support, you posting about my questions on forums, whatever, is my only way of promotion. I'm not paying Google ads. I'm not doing anything. Why? Because I want to keep it affordable. I don't want to... I don't want to like overwhelm you guys with everything. It's so expensive. Everybody spends like over 5K, right? The whole mm -hmm. thing, it's like so much money. And I know architects unfortunately don't make enough money in this country and anywhere actually. And <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't want to be another burden. Uh, and I wish it could be cheaper than, than the current uh, price, but I did my best and I did the math to the, like really to the last details uh, to make it as affordable as I can. And I want to keep it that way. So your help, your support, you posting on forums about my questions means world to me and others. Uh, so it's a community, it's an effort. And you guys emailing me, asking questions about questions, right? It's, it's a huge contribution because I go back and read it again. And I'm like, oh, maybe, okay, but there's a point. Maybe I should tweak it a little bit. Maybe I change one word. There are typos, there are grammatical errors that I'm working on them routinely. I'm constantly changing and tweaking them, but it's a process. It's a community effort. It's not just me. All of you guys are shaping it. And this is the way I want, I like to give back. And that's why I like to tr keep it affordable as it is. And then hopefully it works because I know how much people uh, caring about this process and struggling. And I, I, I really value your effort and I, I really appreciate and thank you guys valuing my effort uh yeah yeah and you can you can tell that with all of the success stories that there are and it is nice to for you not to just uh you know see an opportunity to you know charge a bunch of money for it where you know it, it, you probably could but keeping it affordable so you know that it is more accessible to to people especially if people are having huge successes from it so that's i am it. not I am, this is, this is, I, I, I was in touch with a lot of people when I was creating website because you need a lot of help, right? Because it's a technical process, whatever. There's uh, like legal pro side of it, whatever. Everybody, like nobody understood my, my motivation, my starting point. Uh, Paul Segel's 
Siegel's book about how to start practice, it says uh, in the beginning, it says, define your motivation to start your business. My motivation was equally supporting the community as well as making money. So they were like 50, 50 and people, it's so hard people who did not go through this process, understand it. So, so from the business side, accountants, lawyers and web developers and all that tech people, they cannot understand, they, they still don't understand. One of the, the web developer actually became my friend because we are so in touch like every day. So he doesn't understand at all. He's like, oh my God, like why? I don't understand why, why is it $5? I'm doing like structure sessions and he sees and he, he helps me. He's like, why is it five bucks? Who, who, like five bucks is, what, what is that? Like a bread is more than five bucks. You are spending like six hours on this. You are paying me like hundreds of dollars, why? And I'm like, you don't understand it. It's just, there's, there's a component of that. I was part of that community and I was so desperate for that help. And I'm so and so forth. It's like, oh, so much emotion. I cannot understand. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had the same thing because I've been doing, you know, the podcast and the, the YouTube yeah. things. And I don't sell really anything. And I don't yeah. really, you don't make money, right? <laughs> I don't make money. And so I've had, I think like my dad even has been like, why are you like spending so much time there? I'm like, there's something about like, what I felt I needed when I was going through this, that I want to be a source for people. I just, I don't know. You just, it's, it's one of those, uh, you know, people donate money or people donate things and whatever, you know, it, it's my like source to help even, especially with like, like you, like maybe women or mothers or something that think like, yeah. Oh, well, I had a baby. I can't do it anymore. Now, I want to be like someone to say like, yes, you can and, and try to do that. So and thank God there are a lot of people like you, like really doing like there are a lot of people on NCAR forum and Facebook that have no business being there. Right. They passed their exams like years ago. I know them personally. I mm -hmm. mean, they, we were emailing and they're still on Facebook forum, like religiously answering everybody's question. And I'm like, this is a community effort. Mm -hmm. If you're not part of this, you wouldn't understand. If you have not go, gone through this process, you don't understand that motivation. So that is part of like a huge part of my motivation of, of this business is a is I want to be with you, like, with, with you guys out there. And I want to be part of your journey. It's really we really enjoy we high five at home every but every time somebody emails and says I passed my exam. Thank you the entire home cheers for for the person i pray like daily i pray for people they email me i tell them i'm gonna pray for you i literally pray for them i i'm not just saying that i'm gonna pray for you i sit down and pray for them i name their names when i'm praying i'm like please make so and so pass their exam tomorrow it is why i don't know it's just a little like cultish at this point <laughs> <laughs> it's your goodwill <laughs> yeah it's a goodwill yeah let's put it yeah there. <laughs> yeah yeah. But it well, is thank like, you, Elise. Thank you so much for this. It's amazing. Well, and yeah, and so arequestions.com, right? Yes, it's arequestions.com. It is a website. You take the questions. It's online quizzes. I'm not sending any PDFs, any any books or anything like that. Everything is online. Exam is online. So I was thinking, why not? And then, um, yeah, that's it. It's just one-time purchase. You purchase the questions once. Oh, guys, something else coming up. I totally forgot. Uh, I am, you guys know, some of you must have heard of the structured uh, webinars that I did before. Um, I am going to turn uh, the, and I did some live quiz taking sessions with a lot of people. So during those sessions, I thought content, uh, but live sessions is not sustainable for me. It takes a lot of time and as I am having a hard time to manage it, it fit it in my schedule. Uh, and it doesn't work for you guys because it doesn't work with your schedule at the moment. Let's say you are going through something, you're sick, whatever. You cannot make the live session, you like hit or miss. It's not uh, ideal for anyone, I feel. So I have started investing in a lot of equipment, video recording, animation, softwares and all that. I'm spending my days on YouTube trying to learn animating videos and new softwares and stuff like that. And I started this week actually to create, uh, to turn the structure webinars into recorded sessions, but I, it's gonna grow. It's, I, I, I was doing the structure one and two and it was covering some content. Uh, I'm now turning it into something much larger than that. It's gonna be structures and materials and I'm gonna do mechanicals, plumbing, electrical, site sustainability, all that. It's gonna, gonna be like an ever growing uh, and I'm gonna hope 
I'm hopeful that I'm going to do like weekly, adding weekly new videos at some point and when I get there. Uh, but that's the project for the 2022. And I'm going to let you guys know soon uh, when I launch the first couple hours of videos. So I will let everybody know. With the, if you go to website, my website, airquestions.com and sign up, register basically for any of the free exams, you can register via them. You don't need to buy them. It, it adds you to my email list. So when I launch new stuff, uh, I'll notify you. Perfect. That's so exciting. That'll be wonderful. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it's, right. It'll another, be good. <laughs> yeah, it's another thing, that, another journey. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And we may do this again at some point. So keep an eye out for yeah. maybe another Q&A session. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for coming. Good to, good to hear your questions. I hope we answered uh, most of them. <laughs>